So let's get started. So for those of you that don't know me yet, I am Anya Light and I am an intuitive life coach and a Reiki healer and basically my whole reason for life is to talk about this stuff with you. So this is my purpose and my calling and I am absolutely thrilled to be here with you right now. I really love this new Facebook Live feature. I think it's a really great way for us to all come together and ask questions and just have this space to have a dialogue. So I'm really, really, really grateful for that. So if at any point in this little talk you have questions, please post them and I will do my very best to answer them. So go ahead and ask any questions that you have about energy healing, Reiki, um, anything related to that. So please, please just post your, your comments and questions at any point in this talk. Hi, Don. Hi, Danielle. Hello. All right. So the reason that I'm having this conversation is that a lot of people are wondering what energy healing is. And it can seem like an esoteric or confusing thing to people if they've never heard of it. So for me, to tell you a little bit about my background, when I first came across this energy healing thing, it was because I was very ill and very desperate. So I had a very intellectual background. I was in grad school at the time and I was very, very believing and trusting and passionate about the intellectual mind. So I was, I was the kind of person that was like, if there is not a scientific study to back it up, I don't want to hear about it. It was all very much ra rational, logical kind of way of being in the world with hints of mysticism here and there, but really for the most part, I was a very logical person. Then uh, my physical health deteriorated to a point where I became desperate for something different. I had tried all the doctors, I had tried all the medicines, I had gotten surgery, it, nothing was working. So the first time someone mentioned energy healing, they mentioned Reiki. So for those of you who are here, you may have heard of Reiki, you might have heard of quantum touch, healing touch, uh, crystalline consciousness technique. There is so many different modalities and kinds and types of energy healing. So maybe you're, you've already like had a little bit of understanding of what one of those is. And Reiki is really probably the most popular one at this time. So... You maybe have heard of one of these like specific practices, but what is it? What is energy healing? Energy healing is the broad thing, and Reiki is like the specific practice. But what is energy healing? Right? What is it? What is it? So my answer to that, uh, hi Shay, hi love, good to see you. Hey, Sarah, I'm so glad to see you. This is great. If you like this video, please um, click on the thumbs up or a heart because the more that I get like little feedback or comments or interactions, the more Facebook shows this to more people in my feed. So if you could like make a comment or just interact in some way, I'd really appreciate it. And then this can get out to more people. Thank you. So, hi Yolanda. So, what is energy healing? Okay, so energy healing, at its most basic description, is you, as a human being, you are made of energy. You are made of energy. So, here's the thing. Most of us, 
like 99.99999% of us when we were growing up, our entire society told us that that's not what we were made of. Our schools, our textbooks, our parents, our religions, our government, our societal institutions, our books, our media, everything told us that we were made of matter, right? Remember in science class, matter, we're all made of matter and atoms and particles, remember that? So this is a very outdated, actually, understanding of what we are as beings. But the thing is, it takes, it takes humans a while to catch up to the cutting edge truth. So right now, if you go online and you just Google search quantum physics or quantum reality or anything basically quantum, you'll see that there is now irrefutable irrefutable scientific evidence across the board, hundreds if not thousands of studies, proving the new um, way of perceiving reality is that we're made of energy, not matter. We're made of energy, not atoms and particles. Yes, it's true that matter is real, and it's true that particles are real, and atoms are real, but that's not the, the most small building block. As we were told, we were told it was the smallest, right? But now we understand with quantum physics that the smallest basic building block of life, of me, of you, of this chair I'm sitting on, of this beautiful blue tapestry behind me, of this cell phone that I'm talking into, everything that you see at the smallest Bit, the smallest stuff is energy. So that is a something that humans need to catch up with. So our basic society still has not integrated that knowledge yet. That's okay. So that's why things like energy healing seems a bit woo-woo or far out or confusing or even just scary to people because they don't understand that it's actually just normal, that it's just working with energy, working with energy with a specific um, point and mission of helping someone heal, helping yourself heal, helping someone else heal. The, the point of that is just working with what we are. Just working with what we already are. So our most of our regular society is still under the delusion that we are solid. Okay, this is an optical illusion. It's a very convincing one. But the way our eyes work is this. Okay, our eyes filter out most of what's actually happening around us in the quantum energetic reality. So in reality, there's a lot of stuff happening around us all the time that we just don't see because our eyes are filtering that out so that we can live a rather normal, mundane existence in this reality, in this 3D reality. Okay, If we were to see all the energy stuff that's going on around us all the time, it might be very disorienting and confusing and maybe scary for some of us. So our eyes have this really great function of basically only perceiving in a certain way and filtering out a lot. And the eyes also give us the perception that we're solid, that this body is 100% solid. But... Have you ever heard of those crazy stories about people that can walk through walls, people that can walk on water, those very rare beings, Jesus being one of them. Jesus could perform miracles. He could take water and turn it into wine. He could raise someone from the dead. He could walk through walls. He could appear and disappear, materialize, dematerialize at will. How did he do that? How did he do that? Was he so special? Yes and no. He was special in that he devoted his entire life to understanding the universe. That's special. 
But on the other hand, he wasn't special because all of us can do that. And that's where it gets interesting. So a lot of us are invested in this old way of seeing the world. That we are this physical body and that when this physical body dies, that's it. Right? That's what we were told. But it's simply not true. We are made of energy. So what is energy? Energy, another way of thinking of energy, is it's light. Light. Vibrating wavelengths of light. That's what we are at the most basic fundamental. So an energy healer, or a Reiki healer, or a quantum healer, those are people that have invested a lot of time in their lives to studying how to work with energy, how to perceive what most people don't yet perceive. So have you ever heard of um, the kind of person like, for example, a psychic who can read the future or someone who can see spirits, ghosts, right? Or someone that can see auras. How do they do that? Are they so special and gifted? Eh, in a way, they're special because we're all special, but these are skills. These are skills. So an energy healer has been trained to perceive energy. And so if you can perceive energy, then you can help other people. Because when illness manifests, and that's the main reason that people seek a healer, usually it's, it's like some kind of physical illness, they're doing that, they're seeking healing to become whole become whole. That's actually the meaning of the word healing. Healing means to become whole. So people are seeking, I feel like crap. I feel fragmented. I feel ill. My body feels weird. I feel bad. So they seek a healer. So what's the energy healer doing? The energy healer can perceive what's going on at the deeper levels. And it's just a skill. Like I said, it's just a skill. And anyone can do it. If me, who is a very logic, I'm still very logically minded, actually, um, even though I've been on this sort of mysterious path of, of energy for a couple years now, I'm still very logically minded. Um, but if you would have told me 10 years ago, when I, because I, I just, so I just turned 35 a couple days ago, if you'd have told me when I was 25, that I would be an energy healer right now, 10 years from now, I would have been like, first of all, not even understanding what that is, but if someone would have explained it, I would have laughed hysterically and probably made fun of them because I was very, um, just very stuck in my ways. So for me to get to the point here now where I'm sharing this information with you is so amazing. So what I'm trying to say is that any of us can learn this. And what drew me to Reiki, especially why I just love Reiki so much, is that it's an empowering tool. So you don't have to keep going to a Reiki healer to receive the healing. You can learn it for yourself. And it's very not expensive. Um, when you look at how expensive going to the doctors is and using prescriptions constantly, and stuff like that, and you add that up, and you think about what it costs to get a level one Reiki training, it's like a very reasonable, it's like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks. And then you learn for yourself how to do energy healing on yourself. So you learn this skill for yourself. And that is my goal in life, one of my goals is to just let everyone know about this and to empower people to get the training, to learn the skills, to have the wisdom and understanding within themselves to break out of what normal society tells us, which is mostly a bunch of lies. 
It's mostly a bunch of lies. So I'm really excited to see if there's any questions that you might have right now. Um, Sarah said, I was just reading about this yesterday. Very cool, Sarah. Yeah. Um, let's see, does anyone have any questions? I would love to answer anything or just comments that you wanted to share about energy healing or little brief tidbits of stories of how energy healing or Reiki has helped you or healed you in different ways. I would love to, to uh, share that with everyone. Yeah. So while I'm waiting to see if there's any questions here, I will talk about, let's see, let me, let me check in real quick, see what else needs to be shared. So there is a lot of mistrust of things like the things I do, um, this intuitive, energetic, healing kind of work. And I do understand why. I mean, there's many reasons why someone could be mistrustful. Like I said, I would have been mistrustful of this. And I was in the beginning. <laughs> I was very skeptical. Um, our, we live in a very messed up world right now where people are trying to take advantage of each other, manipulate each other, and trying to just make money, but not really giving a crap about each other, not really taking into consideration how people's actions affect others. So when a lot of people look at this kind of work, this energy healing stuff, they think it's a scam. They think it's you know, I'm just trying to make money, I'm just trying to take your money, I'm just trying to fool you. I was having a really, actually really interesting conversation a couple days ago with my, I'll just say colleague, <laughs> with a colleague of mine. Um, and he was talking about he doesn't believe in Reiki. Um, he's not a, a colleague in like the spiritual sense. I do a lot of different kinds of work, so... <laughs> different kind of colleague, but um, he was saying, you know, I just don't believe it. And I said, why don't you believe it? And he said, well, it just sounds like fanciful, too good to be true kind of thing. Like, you're just trying to make people feel happy and trying to make people feel good. You're just lying to them to make them feel better, right? And his point of view comes from this place that's been hurt, this place that's been broken, and I could really empathize with him. I really could. Because even me, sometimes... So, funny little side note. Um, I'm a healer. That's my work. And I have a healer. Someone that I work with who gives sessions to me. Who kind of works with me to upgrade my system to an even higher level of understanding. And then my healer, she has a healer. <laughs> And it goes on and on and on and on. And I don't know where it stops. But we all have healers. And sometimes when I'm working with my healer, I even have those twinges of like, is this for real? Because she's saying stuff that's blowing my mind into a thousand pieces. And I literally, it's like not computing. My brain's like, what? Ugh. <laughs> you know? And so there's this part of me that just wants to reject it and say, no, I don't believe that. That's too weird. I don't understand that. But as time goes by and then I slowly live my life and I see the world around me corresponding to what my healer lady has said, I'm like, oh, yeah, that does make sense. Oh, I get it. But it's a process. So sometimes the things that we learn can't instantly make sense. It's just not possible because everything around us seems to contradict it. So, you know, when we turn on the television, we see, what do we see? We see advertisements for pills. We see messages saying 
that health care looks like a certain way, right? But in my understanding, health care, how it's presented in the mainstream, is sick care. You take someone in when they're basically falling apart, and you slap a Band-Aid on them, and you say, okay, go on your merry way. Oh, by the way, you owe me thousands of dollars now. That's not what health care is. What health care is to me is empowerment, knowledge, truth, Truth about more than just the physical. Truth about the energetic reality. Because the truth is, is if we all had this understanding, those old ways would cease to exist. Truly, energy healing is facilitated by the mind meeting the heart. So the mind is a powerful tool. So we use our mind to set intentions for our clients. We use our mind to spread wisdom, tell other people. But we use our heart equally. We use our heart to love. And to see beyond our own limitations and shortcomings and to connect. In truth, the heart is, I think, the most important part. So an energy healer is there to love you. Really. Is there to love you, to see you. And have you ever noticed that when you talk to someone who is a helper or a healer or a caregiver or basically just someone who's very happy or vibrant, do you ever notice that when you look in their eyes, there's just like something different? Their heart is turned on. They're living their life in a passionate way. And you can feel that spark. I remember when... Uh, when I went to go visit the most powerful energy healer I've ever met, and she wouldn't even really call herself this, but that's what she is. Um, her name is Amma, A-M-M-A, -A, and she is a living saint. She is this, uh, I think she's like 60 now. She's 60 or 61. She's an Indian woman, and she travels the world constantly, and she's hugged something like 43 million people. And I'm always losing track of like what the count is, but it's something like 43 million. 43 million. Think about that. And <laughs> when I, I've had two hugs from her, the first hug, one of the things that I'll never forget is I was standing in line to hug her and My friend Caroline had told me about this. She said, just wait till she looks in your eyes. Just wait. And I thought, what? What does that mean? But I was coming closer and closer to her, and she was hugging people in front of me, you know. And at one point, <laughs> she looked over the shoulder of the woman she was hugging, and she locked eyes with me. My heart exploded into a thousand roses. I felt such joy because... She was seeing me. She was seeing who I truly am at my deepest level. She was seeing my spirit, my soul. And people that get are fortunate enough to get a hug from her, they have miraculous healings. Emotional, physical, mental, across the board. And these are like two-second hugs. They're fast because she's hugging like thousands of people in one day. So it's like pretty quick. But she is an energy healer. When you come near her presence, you feel good. I mean, it's like doing a, the best drug ever. <laughs> people will just sit in her presence weeping with joy. And that's what an energy healer is. Someone who's awakening themselves in consciousness 
as much as they can and then shining that light outward for others. So I do see a question here. Thank you. Let's, let's look at it. Okay. Yolanda says, I sometimes feel so overwhelmed after work because there is a lot of paperwork to do. I feel ya. But that's part of my job being a teacher. I teach children and teenagers. What can we do to start doing inner healing? I mean, what basic exercises can I do to give good energy to myself? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question here. So with the idea of having a lot to do, that is one of the major difficulties of being a human being at this time on our planet. We're so overworked. It's insane. It's literally insane. <laughs> Most cultures are just running at this insane fast pace. So one of the things that you can learn is to slow down. I understand that there's so much piled on your plate, Yolanda. I, I hear you. At the same time, there's a way that you can be in it and not let it overwhelm you. So one thing that I practice, and it's, um, it's a mantra. So you know how like when you have a million things to do and you're working on something, but you're also simultaneously in your mind thinking about all the other things you have to do in like five minutes, ten minutes later that night, the next day. You're kind of like mentally thinking about and kind of rehearsing for each thing while you're doing something. That is so stressful to, for us to do because we're not fully in our energy now in the present moment. So one thing that an energy healer will help you do is to be more in the present moment. Meaning you're not thinking about the future at all. You're just here doing what you're doing and that's it. And that gives you power. And that makes you less fatigued. It gives you this like vitality where you're not so drained. So the mantra that I use, Yolanda, is this is the only thing I have to do today. So while you're doing something, some task, and you start noticing that your mind is going into like planning for all the other things in the future, just stop yourself, bring your mind back to the focusing on what you're doing in that moment, and you just say to yourself, you could say it out loud or inside your own mind, you could just say, this is the only thing I have to do today. And it works. It just brings you back into the present moment. And of course, you're going to probably do other things later. Yeah, okay. But you don't need to think about it. You don't need to like plan it or rehearse it. So just being here in the present moment. So bringing your focus and awareness back into the present moment. Again, you say, this is the only thing that I need to do today. And then just bring all your focus and concentration into that thing. So that will help, I hope. Um, you say, you know, what can we do to start doing inner healing? So, um, and what basic exercises can I do to give good energy to myself? So the, the, a really good place to start if you're not already practicing meditation is to find a meditation practice that works for you. So if you're already doing meditation, let's just say you're already doing meditation, my advice to you would be to increase the amount you're doing. So for me, for example, um, I was doing like just 20 to 30 minutes every day for a couple years, and then I increased it. For a while, I was doing like two or three hours every day, and lately I've been actually... <laughs> work has been exploding. So I've only been doing an hour every day, but I can tell you that at least doing an hour every day compared to what I was doing before, which was like 20 or 30 minutes, oh my gosh, I feel so less stressed. I feel so less overwhelmed. I feel so much happier, more present, more calm, less like, you know, <laughs> overwhelmed with life. And when I can, you know, do two or three hours 
it really shows you know I can do so much better work with people but if you if you haven't yet started a meditation practice then start small that's my best advice so start with five minutes and I know you you got five minutes so five minutes and so there's so many different techniques that you can research and learn I'll just give you one right now and it's just the most basic meditation technique in the history of the world um, and that's just focusing on your breath so set your phone like an alarm on your phone for five minutes put you know put your phone aside lock your door turn off all the other gadgets make sure you're not interrupted find a comfortable seated position you don't want to lay down because you'll probably like start to snooze so just sit up straight and then just spend five minutes focusing on just observing what it feels like to breathe. That's it. Just noticing. And then when your mind starts to go into the planning and the thinking and the worrying and the whatever, you know, the mind does, you just bring, as soon as you notice it, just bring your attention back to the breath. Just notice. Notice, you know, the, the physical bodily sensations of how it feels to breathe. It's such a basic thing and maybe sounds so like, what's the point of that? But you start with five minutes and then you work your way out. Maybe after a month you're doing ten minutes. Just gradually increasing, increasing, increasing. And, you know, there's this stigma. Maybe it's, there's this like... I don't know, conception in our society that meditation is really hard. Like, it, it's hard. Like, I need to clear my mind now. I need to have no thoughts. And that's just setting yourself up for failure. What you need to understand is that meditation is just a practice. And when you're doing it, you're going to be having thoughts. They're going to come up. But the practice in it is bringing your thoughts back into the present moment and just noticing that you're having the thoughts but not continuing following them. So just keep coming back, keep coming back. You know, when I'm doing my like three-hour meditations, I'm having tons of thoughts constantly. But I'm, I'm bringing my... Every time I notice that I'm off on a thought, I just go, oh, I'm thinking again, and I bring myself back. So I do mantra meditation. So I'm constantly saying these specific sounds in my head. They're um, Sanskrit sounds, syllables. And it's, it's really awesome. I recommend it. Um, it's transcendental meditation. It's a really fun, fun technique. There's so many techniques, but really meditation is the number one thing. And if you're not yet engaging in meditation practice, that is the first thing. But if you already are, good for you. And it's time to deepen it. It really matters how much you're doing. You know, if you, are, if you can increase the amount you're doing every day, you will feel a difference. You will feel a difference. All right, let's see if there's other questions. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you for asking that. I hope that helps. And if you have follow-up questions, um, you can post more later here, um, and I'll reply in writing to you. Brian says, feel with heart space. Yeah, or yeah, no, you know when it feels good. Yeah. Exactly. Feel with your heart. Feel with your heart. All right. So that seems to... Oh, okay. Oh, I've got one from Sarah here. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, Sarah says, how can I project my good energy for people with letting them drain me? Oh, so you're saying... Um, are you saying protect? Are you... How can I... Maybe you're saying... I think you're saying... How can I protect my good energy um, without letting people drain you? I think that's what you're saying. Um, you struggle with balancing things in life. So that's a really good question. Okay, so 
as we start to become more and more aware of the reality of life, <laughs> and I, it's, it's, that's such a dramatic thing to say, but it's really true. We start to notice that other people are not where we are. Other people haven't quite learned what we've learned. So it can be challenging to interact with them in ways that aren't draining for us. So when we're having our healing journey, when we're waking up in consciousness, we're meditating, we're receiving healing sessions, we start to notice, you know, there's like, oh my God, our society is freaking insane. Like it becomes even more insane. It's almost like the more you wake up, the more you see that society is insane. It's increasingly insane. So that's a bit challenging to deal with because it's like, oh man, sometimes you might think, I just want to go back to the way it was because it was easier. I had, you know, ignorance is bliss, right? But it's not. So you're saying like, how do you let protect yourself so other people don't drain you? And that's like, such a good question. Oh. My best advice is, is to be discerning about who you spend time with. Now, you can't isolate yourself from the world completely. You can't, you know, move to an island where it's only you and the other, other enlightened people. It doesn't work. I know a lot of people that have tried to find the ideal community by like going to intentional communities and going off the grid and trying to live with other just enlightened beings and they end up just recreating the same kinds of dramas within their little communities because they're just running away. And so they're just recreating the same stuff because they haven't uh, learned the lessons that they need to learn within themselves. They're just trying to run away. So... How do you balance this? So you're in society, Sarah, right now. You're there, you know, and you have to deal to some extent with people who are, we call them negative, for lack of a better term, people that are going through drama, suffering, people that are mean, people that are jerks <laughs> you know like they those people are out there you know and those people might even be in your family or your co-workers or people that you deal with on a regular basis so making like a mental inventory is there anybody in your life that you've just outgrown is there friends that you used to have that resonated with you you're kind of on the same wavelength but now you're just not it's like when you're around them you're kind of like you're not getting anything out of it you don't feel uplifted you don't feel joyful in fact you kind of feel tired or just kind of like ugh, you know if there's friends like that you know you just say goodbye and you don't have to be dramatic about it but you just slowly step aside in as kind of a way as possible. You know, and if there's people in your family, your biological family, that are really super negative for you, and there's a way that you can just not be around them for a period of time, I actually encourage that. In spiritual communities and circles, there's this, there's this idea that in order to, to awaken, we need to you know, unconditionally love our biological family all the time and just, <laughs> but here's the thing, at certain points of the healing journey, it's, it can be good to say, bye bye you're really a negative force in my life right now, I feel very triggered by you, I don't want to be around you right now, I had, it was about... I had like a two year period where I didn't speak to a number of members of my biological family. I needed that. Um, I think Sarah, I mentioned to you that, you know, I am someone who has healed herself from 
intense abuse, PTSD, and the the source of that, you know, abuse was certain people that were in my life when I was a kid. So I took like about a two-year period where I just cut people out of my life. And I just went and did my own thing. And I explored the spiritual world. And I started to learn Reiki. This was actually right around the time that I was really getting deep into Reiki. So I just said goodbye. And I told them not to contact me. I wrote in a letter. And I didn't speak to them for like two years. And then I got to a certain point where I'd healed myself enough. And I started to think about getting in contact with them again. And I did. Um, It was a kind of a scary moment. But what I decided that I wanted to do was I wanted to offer them love. So a lot of times when I contact these people, these biological family members, I do it in a spirit of giving, of service. They, in a lot of ways, they don't offer me anything uplifting. But I can offer them upliftment. But it took me a while to get to that point. And you can't, like, skip steps. You can't be like, oh, now I'm going to be ready just to love everyone unconditionally because they're my family. You... For some people who have dealt with trauma and a lot of suffering, there has to be a period of time of saying goodbye, of just like stepping away, you know. Um, In terms of dealing with people in like public spaces, um, start, you know, just notice within yourself when you're in a certain place, how does it make you feel? For example, I personally, I don't go to bars anymore. I don't. I mean, I will once in a great while if there's, like, a fundraiser there and I want to support someone or if, like, it's a weird, fluky thing. But I don't go to bars because the energy there feels like crap to me. And then I just start feeling tired and I don't want to do it because I spend a lot of time to trying to raise myself up. You know, so it's almost like, you know, that idea of, like, eating a piece of pizza while you're on the treadmill. It's like... (laughs) Why do you do that? Just be on the treadmill. (laughs) So I don't want to like spend three hours meditating, leave the meditation feeling amazing, and then go to like hang out at a bar. Even if I'm not drinking, like just being in the bar with a bunch of other people who are drinking. And this kind of brings up a whole side tangent that might be uh, difficult for people to hear. But alcohol lowers your vibration, lowers your frequency. So it basically puts you into kind of an animalistic consciousness. Uh, And that consciousness is very full of anger often, fear, sadness. So when I'm around people that are drinking, I start to feel it. And that just brings me down. So I'm just really discerning about the places that I go um, for my own well-being. So I hope that helps, Sarah. I could talk about this subject for like, a thousand years and not even scratch the surface, but I hope that helped you. So I noticed that I have been talking for almost 45 minutes, so I'm going to start wrapping things up, but I want to, um, if you haven't yet, can you thumbs up or love this video? I would really appreciate it, but it'll get to more people on Facebook if you do that. And so I have two calls to action. So one is I have posted on my blog a blog post about this topic. How does energy healing really work? And you can, uh, as soon as I sign off here, I will post the link to that blog post right here. And I encourage you to go read it. It kind of goes into more of the in-depth metaphysical esoteric side of energy healing. So I hope you enjoy that blog post. And the other thing, the awesome, super cool thing, is that if you decide that you want to do a session with me, whether that's energy healing or life coaching or a reading, I do all different kinds of things with people, any kind of session 
support session um, for the rest of the month of April. If you book a session with me, I will give you 20 bucks off your session if you mention this video. So this is like a verbal coupon. So if you just say, hey, I watched that video on energy healing, I shall give you $20 off your session. And I do sessions through Skype and the phone and then also in person as well in Northwest Ohio. So, and you can find uh, the session information uh, on my website, which is www.anyalight.com, A-N-Y-A-L-I-G-H-T.com. So yeah, thank you for the questions, Sarah and Yolanda, and thanks for everybody who is here. Hey, hi Joni. Thanks, Susanna, for being here, and all you wonderful people. And if you enjoyed this video, shoot me a little message and tell me about what topic you would like me to talk about in future videos. Um, because I really, I'm starting to love this Facebook Live thing, and I think this is going to be a thing. So let me know what other topics you want me to talk about. Anything is really fair game. So let me know. Hmm. It has been delightful to talk to you today. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.